blah, 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 blah. This is, of course, negative 6.8. This is 11. This one, almost every kid is fooled. And they start saying, oh, well, that's the square root of 5 over the square root of 20. And then they start breaking it down. Well, that's about 2. And that's about, uh, like, uh, 4.5. And they go crazy, right? Because they forget grade 3 math. 5 over 20 is what fraction? One fourth. And the square root of one fourth, we already know from up here, is one half. And this one is, of course, between four and nine. Closer to four or closer to nine? Way closer to nine, right? So two point and something close to three. So, you know, 2.9, 2.8, whatever. Everybody cool? Now, remember, the long way to do it is. It's four steps out of a possible five, so it's exactly 2.8. Right? Okay. Next page. I showed you what I wanted you to do. You had to do some guessing. Yeah? So, this one. Now, that's pretty close to 1,600, right? Which would be 16 times 100 when you break it down, right? which would be 4 times 10, which would be 40, right? So since that's bigger than four, bigger than 1,600, it's got to be bigger than 40, yeah? So if you got even that far, I'd be perfectly happy. Because remember, all you had to do was tell me if you thought it was going to be irrational or what it might be. So maybe some of you said irrational, but did a bit of this. I don't really care because... <clears throat> Today, you're going to learn how to actually deal with these. Okay? I was wanting you to look at the perfect ones and see if you can build up some of your own patterns with it. Everybody cool? All right. So this one, barf. But that's pretty close to 3,000, yeah? 3,000 is 3 times 1,000, yeah? That has a perfect cube. But does that? So that is probably going to be irrational, right? Everybody cool? Now, if you broke out your calculators, you're going to have different answers here. But the whole point of this was you were supposed to try and do it without a calculator, yeah? This one, 729 times 100, right? Because what do two zeros mean? It means times 100. Well, that has a square root. But does that? No. So this would have been irrational, as your guess. Right? This one, I see two zeros, so I know there's a hundred and a thousand. Well, that one I know has a square root. Does a thousand? Nope. Because that is ten times one hundred, right? Square root, square root, but ten doesn't have a square root. So that would have been irrational. Everybody cool? Even if you didn't do it, and often this is work that isn't done by my students, so you'll notice I charitably did not come around and check it. And we are talking about it now, almost doing like a second lesson with it. This is going to lead right into what we really do with these. Okay? Jazri, or Jazni. Okay. So this one now... We decided it was probably not going to work as a square root, but might it work as a cubed root? Well, we know that 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, right? But 20 times 20 times 20 is 8,000, isn't it? So it's got to be somewhere between the two. It's pretty close to 10, right? So you might want to guess something close to 10, or some of you might have guessed irrational. It actually is 12 cubed. It's actually 12. But G and H, I don't expect people to have gotten. I expect most of you to have guessed irrational there and irrational there. 
That's what I expected. This one is actually 23, which you could work out because you could have figured it out from this pattern, yes? Right? Because every the next square root adds the next odd number, right? 361 to 400, you added 39. So this one, you're going to add 41 and get 441 is 21. Then you're going to add 43 to get 484, that's 22. Then you would add 40, not 45, sorry, to get 529 is 23. But I'm betting most of you said it was irrational. But that's okay because that was the whole point of this exercise. Cube root of 1,000 we know is 10. If that wasn't there, do we know the square root of 196? It's on our list. It's 14. If that wasn't there, do we know the square root of 225? It's on our list. It's fitting. So this must be the square root of this. This one we know is irrational because 125 isn't on our square root list. This is on our cube root list, so we know it's 4. This one's tricky. What's on our cube root list? 125 is on our list, isn't it? But is this 125? No, it's 125 over 1,000, right? But 125 is on our list. It's 5. Cube root of 125 is 5. What's the cube root of 1,000? 10. What's 5 over 10? It's either 0.5 or 1 half, right? This one, same as M, but it's cube roots. So that's 5 over 3. And this one is irrational because that is not on our cube root list. Everybody cool? And when I say cool, I mean like you understand what's going on here. Maybe you can't do it every time, but you understand what's going on, yeah? I, I believe I told you to skip the next two pages, or the next page, I mean. And let us move on to page 30, where we're actually going to learn what to do <clears throat> when it's not on our perfect list. Remember I told you, in grade 8, if you had something like you were doing Pythagoras, A squared, B squared, C squared, and at the end you did a square root and you got a decimal, you would just round it off, right? We don't do that anymore. Decimals are for physics. In math, we don't use them. We keep things exact. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now, Okay. So all of you already know the square root of 4 is 2. You know the square root of 9 is 3. Right? And you know that in between 4 and 9, there's 5, 6, and 7. Right? Which all have a square root, but they're going to be one of those weird, yucky decimals that we don't like. Everybody cool? All right. So we're going to deal with those now. But first thing we got to do is we got to talk about... Um, some of these words because as you know I use the real words right so the first thing we got to do is talk about what a radical is and a radical and again you don't have to write down everything I write okay but you need the key words so I'm gonna write a whole definition here what the heck are you two doing did you need a pencil then why the hell are you grabbing his Go sit over there by Furio, because I can't have you sitting beside each other, obviously, because you're going to be all over each other. Take your time. Try to leave Furio's pencil alone, okay? But he has a pretty sassy green pen, so you may have to work on your self-control. A radical is any mathematical expression. Now that is probably, you know, some of you may not want to bother writing that down, but that's up to you, with this symbol in it. Any one. 
Now, we already talked about this symbol. We talked about often there's a little number here. What if there's no number there? What's the number that's really there? Two, right? So there's going to be something there. I'm putting a letter A to remind you that it could be any number. Everybody cool? All right. Anything with that symbol in it is what we call a radical. All right? An entire radical has that symbol and a radicand the thing that you're going to break down. Now, we just did two pages of that, right? They all had that symbol and something underneath there. Everybody cool? This is usually, we're going to do math here because we don't usually leave them like that. We are going for a mixed radical. And a mixed radical has a number, and then the root, and then the radicand. We already talked about this number a couple of days ago, how it's a coefficient. It multiplies this. This number, we get that number from the radicand. The radicand will break down to give us x everybody cool so whenever we see an entire radical our job is always to try and break it down like this is everybody good okay now i'm going to show you how to do that it's actually really really easy the first thing we have to discuss though is does the root of 72 exist rationally is it on our list no we already know this because that was the first example we did right when we broke it down and we said it's between uh eight and nine right and we got it worked it out it was about 8.5 yeah so it doesn't really exist so our job now is to make this because we don't want decimals because what do we know about this number if i type in the root of 72, and I get that. What do I know about that number? We know it's irrational. What do I know about the, that number if this calculator screen stretched, stretched all the way to Simrath? Pardon? It's infinite. It will fill up, won't it? And it will keep going past Simrath, yes? So can you tell me the square root of 72? You can't. Because that decimal will go on forever. Do we understand? Now, in the real world, we need a number there, don't we? Like if we're building a house and we need to use Pythagoras, we need a number here. So we would use the decimal, wouldn't we? Anybody that's built something knows that when you measure, you round off, right? Like what, how tall are all of us? We all give our height in feet and inches, yes? I'm five foot eight. Am I really five foot eight? No, I'm five foot seven and three quarters of an inch, which means I am this far from five foot eight. Could I go even smaller than three quarters? I mean, maybe I'm five foot seven and 11 sixteenths, but that's just stupid, yeah? So we round it off. But in math, we like to keep things exact, and that's what we're going to learn how to do. And here's how we're going to learn how to do it. Do you remember a few days ago when we broke things down with factor trees? Everybody remembers that, right? So the first thing we want to do when we are converting these is we want to prime factor the radicand. So in this case, the radicand, and I will highlight that word everywhere on the page, lives under the radical symbol. So what is it in this case? It's 72, right? So let's prime factor that. We all know how to make a factor tree of 72. I don't want to force you into choosing my factors. You do whatever you want. So build your tree. I bet that almost all of you use eight and nine as your first break. And that's cool. How many people use eight and nine? Cool. Cool. Can I stop at either of those? 
course not, because neither one is prime. So we go again. 2 and 4. Stop there because it's prime. 2 and 2. Stop there because it's prime. And 9 is 3 and 3. So now we know that 72 equals... How many 2s do you see? 2 times 2 times 2. Times... How many 3s do you see? 3 times 3. Do we agree? Now we're in the 10th grade now, right? Would we ever write all that out? We've already done exponents. We're not going to write that out. We're big kids. So what are we really going to write? 2 cubed times 3 squared. Everybody agree? Easy peasy, yeah? So now, can I write... Step 2 is rewrite the radicand as factors. So the radicand was 72, but isn't it also 2 cubed times 3 squared? Isn't it? Okay. What little number should be right there? 2. Because I'm looking for groups of 2, aren't I? Like up here, when I had the square root of 4, that's really the square root of 2 squared, isn't it? And I'm looking for a group of 2, yes? So I bring that 2 out here. Well, let's look here. I'm looking for a group of 2. Do I have a group of 2 anywhere here? Where? I got two three, so I can bring out that three, can't I? I look. I was looking for a group of two. I got it, so they're gone. Everybody cool? Just like up here, because this square root of three squared is the same as the square root of nine, yeah? Can I get a group of two out of there? How many groups of two can I get out of there? One. So I can bring out a two... But how many twos were there? Three. Was I able to remove all of them? No, I could only move two of them. So what stayed under there? A two. Everyone see? Now, step three. All the numbers that came out, what do they become? What math does that do to the thing that's after it? Like if I have 5x, what math is happening there? Multiplication. So what math must be happening there and there? So all the numbers that came out multiply together. What is 2 times 3? 6. And what did I leave under there? Two. Now, I'm sad that 30 of you missed the joke. What did I leave under there? I made you say underwear. Thanks, Braden. <laughs> Is everybody cool? It's pretty easy, right? If you can build these trees, you can figure out every single square root. All right? Now, there's a shortcut, like there always is, Right? But let's do these first two the long way. Everybody cool? Let's start. How would you break down 99? So step one in blue was break down the radicand. How would you, how would you break down 99? Anybody want to volunteer with their first two branches? Addison. Nine and 11. Nine and 11. Could we stop there? No, of course not. Why not? Muscon? Uh, uh, nine three and three. Everybody agree? And now we're done, yeah? So instead of 99, what do I really have there? I have the square root of 3 squared times 11, right? And how big a group am I seeking here? A group of two. How do you know it's a group of two, Gersa Hill? Because there's no little index here. 
Am I allowed to write that in to remind myself if I want? Of course I am. Would I, as your math teacher, ever take away credit from you for that? No, of course not. So, I'm looking for a group of two. Do I see any groups of two there? I see it right there, correct? So I can bring out my three, and what did I leave there? 11. And that I should have done in red, because that was the last step. Easy peasy, right? Okay. If it works once in math, how often does it work? Every time. So what am I going to do to 75? Break it down. What would be your first branches? 5 and 17? No, that would be 85. But 5 and 15. So Amelia went with 5 and 15. Can I stop there? Why not? 15 can go smaller. To what? 5 and 3. So this is really what? The square root of 5 squared times 3. Right? Is there a pair there? The 5. So I bring out the 5, and what did I leave under there? Thank you, Brayden. Bonus points. I left the 3. Is everybody cool? Easy, right? Now, as the numbers get bigger, what happens to your factor tree? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Is there a way to make this shorter? Yeah, there is. Watch. Right here isn't the square root of 99. I'm going to choose a different color green. Isn't it 9 times 11? Right? Doesn't 9 have a square root? So I bring out the 3, right? Do you see 9 somewhere in my tree? It's right there, yeah? So I've already said you can stop your trees at prime numbers, but now, if I'm looking for a square root, I can stop my branches at any perfect square. Does everybody see that? So let's have a look at 75. I could have done what Amelia did, 5 and 15, but could I also have done this, 3 and 25? And I could stop there, couldn't I? Because isn't 25, doesn't that have a square root? So I could stop there. Now let's say you don't have your square roots memorized. Then what do you have to do? build the whole tree. But if your square root is memorized, can you stop early? So let's have a look at 80. Who wants to break down 80? I will take any volunteers to break down 80. And not even all the way, just their, their first two branches. Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going 8 and 10. Are either one of them perfect squares? So I got to keep going, don't I? Because they're also not prime. Who wants to do the next layer? Now oh, you had your turn, Jacqueline. Who wants to do the next branches? Jaden. Um, two. two and four. Can I stop there? I can stop at the two because it's prime. Can I stop at the four? Yeah. Why? Because 4 has a square root, doesn't it? Right? Okay. Now what about 10? Simran. 2 and 5. And I'm going to stop there, aren't I? So now I'm going to rewrite it in green. Now, this rewrite step, do you think you always need to do it? Or do you think you can do a bit of practice and then you start to just see it? If you always need to do it, is that okay? If you just see it, is that okay? Excellent. So I'm going to rewrite it. It's not 80 anymore. It's 4 times, how many 2's are there? 2 squared times, what's left? 5. Now, does 4 have a square root? What is it? 2, so I'm going to bring out a 2. Is that a group of 2? 
So what do I get to do with it? Bring out a two. Is that anything? So where does that five stay? In the radical. And what do I do with these guys? Two times two, because they're out front, right? And what math is happening? Four. Everybody cool? Now, watch this. Doesn't 80 end in zero? So I can divide it by zero or by 10 or five, right? If I divide it by five, I get 16. Could I have stopped right there? Why? Because 16 has a square root. And what does it happen to be? Four. Everybody cool? Now, does everybody see why having a few of those square roots floating around in your brain is helpful? So let's look at 300. Big number. It's going to make a big tree. Simrith, what would you do with it? You would do 103. Why would you use 3 and 100? Yes. Which means it's probably going to start dripping on Jasneet any minute. The roof leaks there. The roof has leaked since the very first time it rained seven years ago when they built this place. I keep asking them to fix it. Yep. All right. So, Simrith, why did you choose 100? It's so loud I can't even hear you. But I think you said because 100 has a square root. What is it? Oh, you said three times, uh, okay. But isn't two times 150, 300? So why did you choose three and 100? So would you keep going with your tree? All right, let me ask this. Could she stop here? Why? Because 100 has a square root. What's coming, so this is really three times 100, yes? What's coming out? Is the square root of 3 or the square root of 100 coming out? Which one has a square root? What is it? So this is 10 root 3 because this is going to bring me out a 10. Does everyone understand? I do not mind saying that this is the heaviest rain I have ever actually seen. Now I have not been in the tropics. I have been told that it can be rainier in the tropics. And of course, monsoons in India. I've never been in one of those. But that's pretty hardcore. I imagine your soccer academy will be indoor today. No, you can, well, you can do box lacrosse indoor by definition. But yes, you're field lacrosse, so you are stuck. All right, now, this has now worked four times. How many times does it have to work in math before we believe it? Once. Once. And this has worked four times. Are we good to go? So what am I going to do for 63? 63 is the example I always give. 63. So what is it? Nine and seven or seven and nine. Why would you use 7 and 9 instead of 21 times 3? Why, Jazz Gersahill? Ha <laughs> ha, I fooled you. Why? Because 9 is a perfect square. So what's coming out here? 3. And what's staying under there? Underwear. 7. It did get worse. Wow. What? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's slowing up, though. 
Is it hail or just rain? Is it bouncing? No, you can't. You live on the south coast of Canada. It rains a lot. Eh. All right. What am I going to use for 32? Okay, gentlemen, ladies, it rained. Jidu, especially you. This is only your second class out of 12. I would not recommend spending a lot of time at the window. You're going to use four and eight. That's cool. So what's coming out? Two root eight. Am I done? No, of course not. Why? Because eight is four and two. So what's coming out again? Two, two, and I left a two under there. What do I do with them? Multiply them to get four root two. Now let me ask you this. If I knew my perfect squares, isn't that two times 16? What's the square root of 16? Say it loud and proud, Carmen. Not four. Four. And there it is right there. Right? Okay, now 363 is... Oh, it's over. What's 363? Three and 121. Why'd you choose 121? Because it's a perfect square. Why did you know that three worked? Right, because you gave us that trick last time, right? You add up the digits. 3 plus 6 plus 3 is 12. 12 divides by 3, so that divides by 3. What's the square root of 121? 11. 11. What stayed under there? 3. Three. See how easy it is? Turn the page over. Now, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, because I said almost always we want to make them simpler, yes? But sometimes we need to go the other way. Very rarely, but you need to see it. But it's no different. If there is a two out there, how many twos had to be under there? That would have to be 5 times 2 squared, wouldn't it? Yes. What is 2 squared? 4. 5 times 4 is what? 20. Everybody cool? Okay. If there's 1 7 there, how many had to be there? 2. So that would be the square root of 29 times 7 squared which would be 29 times 49, which is 1,421. Everybody cool? Now, don't think that I actually know that. I've done these notes already this year. I, I just remembered that it was that. Everybody good? It's easy, right? Now, there's a little trick here to help you as well. 7 root 29. What little number should be right there? Two. Seven beside a little two. Seven squared. Picking up what I'm putting down? What if it was a little three? What would this be? Cubed. What if it was a little four? What would this be? Four. What if it was a little five? What would this be? Five. So... What's the rule we can tell ourselves? If I have x, a root y, and I want to go backwards, x is going to be to what power in here? A, whatever it is. Everybody understand? Now, we don't do this very often, but sometimes it's helpful to us. So it's a good trick to have in our mathematical toolbox. Right? Okay. What about this one? If there's one six out there, what's this going to be? Four times six squared, which would be four times 36, which would be 144. Now you got to think about D. 
You got to think really carefully about D. What do you think the answer to D is? Don't you cheat, Gersa Hill. I don't know what 12 times 25 is. Oh, okay, I'll allow it. But I think you do, because you know what 4 times 25 is. What's that? And how many 4s are there in 12? So what's the answer? There you go. So Gersa Hill, what's the answer, Gersa Hill? So how many people think it's that? That's a legitimate thing to say, right? Now let's stop for a second. Does that exist? Why not? You can't have a square root of a negative number, can you? But I have to keep this negative involved, don't I? Have we seen that before? where the negative hasn't been part of the multiplying? What is that answer? Addison? Negative 25. Negative 25. What is that answer? 25. What's the difference? Jasney? Right. There's no bracket up here, so this negative isn't part of it, is it? So, there's no bracket here, is there? So what's going back under there? The negative or just the 5? Just the 5. So this is negative root 12 times 5 squared, which is negative 12 times 25, which is, of course, negative root 300. Yeah, everybody got it? Okay, now listen. You are going to finish page 31. You are going to work on page 32. And you are going to work on page 33. And that is what we are going to work on today. Now stop for a moment. What? Let's do A, B, and C together because they're different. But are they different? No, because they're the same, right? What is my first step to breaking this down? Oh, here it comes again. What's my first step? Amelia? Pardon me? Oh, you're, gonna, you're starting to break it down. Six and nine. Are we cool with that? Can we stop at either one of those? Jacqueline wants to stop at 9 because it's a square root. But Jacqueline, what does that little 3 tell us? That we don't want square roots anymore, do we? So, can I stop at either one of those? So what do I need to do with 6? 2 and 3. What do I need to do with 9? 3 and 3. Oh, what do I see right there? Three threes. What size of group am I looking for? Three. So, what comes out, Carmen? The three comes out, and what stayed under there? The two. Now, was there a shortcut when we were doing square roots? We could stop at any perfect square, right? Do you think there's a shortcut when we're doing cube roots? Where could we stop at? A perfect cube. So couldn't I have done 2 times 27? Because isn't that on our cube root list? And what's the cube root of 27? 3. And what do we leave under there? 2. Everybody got it? So let's check 144. Now, 144 is going to trick some of you because you're going to say the answer is 12. Is it? Why not? 
because I need a cubed root. So 144, most of you will go 12 and 12. Doesn't help me. 3, 4, 3, 4. Any groups of 3 yet? Still none. 2, 2, 2, 2. Any groups of 3 now? Where? There's three twos, right? So what do we get to bring out? Two. And what stayed under there? Yes. What stayed under there? A three, a three, and a two. What's three times three? And what's nine times two? Eighteen. Everybody see how it goes? Now, what about 128? What's different in C? I need a group of how much, Gerzil? Four. Does anything else change? I just break that down, and now I'm looking for groups of four. Everybody cool? So let's go. What's the first thing you want to do there? Because that's a big number. What's the first thing you want to divide it by? Two. Why two? Because it's even. So 2 and 64. Can I stop at either one of those? Nope. So 64, what's that going to be? We could go 8 times 8. Can I stop there? Any groups of 4? No? Nope. Darn. Okay. What's eight going to be break down into? Two and four and? Two and four. Any groups of four yet? Crap, still not. Okay, well, what can I break down there? Two and two and two and two, right? Now do I have any groups of four? How many? I see one group of four right there, yeah? So what comes out? Two, because there's my group of four, and what stayed? Two twos, which is? Three twos. Nice, Emma. Three twos, which is? Eight. Two times two times two. Is everybody good? All right. You do the rest of 31, 32, and 33. You start on it right now, and then you finish it tonight. Okay? Okay. I am going to stop the recording, take attendance, and start walking around and offering any assistance. Now listen to me. If something doesn't work... Do we try to force it in math class or do we accept that it doesn't work? Let me give you an example. 7 over 15. That looks like it should get simpler, right? But does it? No. So we stop. If we can't go any further in math, we stop. We don't try to force it. Everybody understand? Go. Go.